change community. Filming in my car because it seems like I spend a lot of time driving and you know drive time is also a good time to think and to ponder, to be alone with your thoughts. I used to get in my car and I'd turn on the music full blast or I would be using my Blackberry or I would be using my iPhone or something because car time was just additional work time. Now, I do understand the irony of what I'm going to advocate and that is use your drive time for quiet time and I'm filming this segment while I'm driving. I, I get the irony. However, I want to make a point. Very often on my drive times these days, I use the time to pray. Now you could rightly argue that, well Brad, you're a California driver on California freeways and you better be praying. Yeah, I better be. I've also found it's a good time to be alone, just me and God. I don't turn on the radio. I'm not multitasking as much these days with my phone. I'm just driving and I'm thinking and I'm pondering and I'm praying. When do you pray? Do you have times through the day where you're alone with your thoughts and alone with God? Do you have times in your day when no one else is there and other distractions are turned off for at least a little bit? For me it's drive time and I would challenge you to find a time where you can pray. We often say that we're too busy to pray. But as a friend of mine said in a book title, we're too busy not to pray. Because we have so much coming at us and so much to do, prayer is a vital part of who we are and what we do in Christ. It's our connection to Him. It's our, it's our source for fuel. In this second part of a new series, our daily life with Christ, just some practical advice on Christian living. I want to talk about prayer very quickly. Sometimes when we pray and we ask God direction, we are told by well-meaning Christians, well, just do what you think is right and have faith and leap. You don't have to look. Just take the plunge. Just jump. You know what? I would challenge that from a biblical point of view. In the Bible, faith had nothing to do with guessing God's will. Well, maybe he wants me to do that. Maybe he wants me to do that. I'll just close my eyes, hold my breath, and have faith, and I'll just trust, and I'll do something. Wrong answer. In the Bible, faith was always tied to obedience. In the Bible, faith was trusting God when you didn't know the outcome. It's saying yes to God's commands when you weren't sure how it would turn out. That's where we need faith. God, I don't see where this will go, but you've told me to go. I don't see how this would work, but you've told me to do it. That's where our faith comes in, not on the front end. The Bible teaches that God will very clearly, very clearly give us His will tell us what he wants us to do, very specifically. A lot of that is already spelled out in the Bible. And that's why yesterday's video is so important, daily Bible reading. But sometimes in the decisions of life, we need to hear from God. And I want to tell you, God will answer. I have a friend, and this is her prayer. God, give me such clear signs that I will not doubt that it was you. I will not doubt what you're saying. I will not doubt how you've answered. God, give me clear signs so that I'll know for sure it's you. That's a good prayer. You might say, well, Brad, I need an answer right now. Well, do you? God knows when you need the answer. And God knows which answer you need. I'm praying about three very specific things in my life right now. I feel rushed about them. I, I feel some time constraints about them. But I'm determined just every day to pray the prayer. God give me signs that are so clear that I cannot doubt it's you. 
take some time to pray. It's fuel for your life. It will enrich your relationship with Christ. And more than that, you'll have answers for the questions you're asking.